Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. So we've done a number of videos here on TechQuickie explaining the alphabet soup that you have to slurp down in order to understand exactly what it is you're buying when you go shopping for electronics. And perhaps no company has been more guilty of throwing seemingly random letters at product names than Intel. So while it might not be too hard to understand the difference between a Core i3 and a Core i5, you know, bigger number is better as a general rule. If you've ever looked at a product page or a spec sheet for a laptop or even some desktops, you've probably noticed that sometimes there are letters attached to the end of the CPU model numbers too. What are those for? Well, as it turns out, these letters aren't just random characters that Intel threw in. They actually have real meanings that tell you something about the processor. Unfortunately, there are so many of them that it can feel like you're trying to crack the Da Vinci code just to figure out what your CPU was designed to do. But fear not, TechQuickie is here to demystify what they all mean, starting with the one you're probably most familiar with already, K. K means that a chip's multiplier is unlocked, meaning that it can be easily overclocked if you have a similarly enabled motherboard. Non-K chips have very limited overclocking functionality, so make sure you look for that K if you want to tweak your system. By the way, Intel doesn't talk about it as much, but the K in HK CPUs that you occasionally see in high-end laptops also means the same thing. Speaking of which, let's move on to H then, which officially stands for High Performance Graphics and is used to designate Intel's higher end offerings in the mobile segment that consume more power. And here's another mobile specific one. Many of those higher power chips also have a Q on the end. This is for quad core. So that's why you'll often see HQ on more expensive laptops. It is not a subliminal message intended to make you think that Intel notebooks are high quality. Or is it? Anyway, the other letters that you're likely to see on mobile chips are U and Y, with U standing for ultra low power and Y meaning, yeah, um, extremely low power. Hmm, why not E? for extremely, oh, that's right, because E was used to designate chips that support ECC memory. So for better or for worse, U and Y chips are what you'll see in laptops and other mobile devices where the focus is more on saving battery life than on performance, with some Y series CPUs having TDPs of under five watts. Now it bears noting that Intel has an M suffix to make it clear that a chip is mobile, but currently it's only being used on Xeon chips for mobile workstations. Now let's kick things back over to desktop land. We'll start with the letter T. This feels like an episode of Sesame Street. These processors still fit in a standard LGA desktop socket, but they are low power, so you'll often see them in small form factor or all-in-one computers that are designed with smaller power supplies or less aggressive cooling. Other letters can indicate some interesting graphics options. So if you see a chip with a P on the end, this indicates a desktop processor without integrated graphics, which can save you a few bucks if you're planning to use a discrete video card anyway, while the newer G CPUs feature Radeon RX Vega graphics that are built in from none other than Intel's biggest rival, AMD, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, I mean they're total non-competitor Radeon Technologies Group, which is a totally different company. Now, of course, we'd be remiss if we didn't give a quick shout out to R and C, which we last saw on the now several generations old Broadwell line to designate a soldered on CPU and then an unlocked desktop CPU respectively. I don't know what the point of C instead of K was, but you know what, it doesn't matter, it's over now. Let's finish this up then with the most dramatic letter of all, X. This indicates a very high-end, unlocked consumer CPU with the most cores and the highest prices. And it's currently sitting atop the pile in the Core i9-7980 XE. 
for Extreme Edition. Not to be confused with E for ECC memory, like I mentioned earlier. So, in summary then, maybe Intel could do a better job of making these things simpler and more consistent for consumers. But, at least to their credit, someone over there recognized the problem and spearheaded the creation of this lengthy website to help people decipher their ever-shifting meanings. We're gonna have that linked below so you can find the latest updates. Speaking of the latest updates, if you're not all about getting the latest phone all the time, you wanna be able to repair your own devices and improve their longevity, iFixit are the guys to help you out. They're all about teaching people how to take stuff apart and fix their electronics. And they're leading the charge in the electronics repair industry with their iconic blue and black ProTech toolkit. And it's now only $59.95. It's got their 64-bit driver kit. It's got this compact case that folds up really nicely. It's got a wide variety of plastic opening tools, spudgers, picks, suction cups, all that kind of great stuff, including ESD safe tweezers and an ESD safety strap. And it's backed by iFixit's lifetime warranty. So don't pay people to repair your devices. Go and get an iFixit ProTech toolkit so you can repair your devices forever. And check out the over 25,000 free repair guides at ifixit.com. We're gonna have that linked below. So thanks for watching guys, like, dislike, check out other channels, leave a comment with video suggestions, and subscribe. Yeah, subscribe dance.